really um, financially sustainable. Some other values, as I was saying, is like having mixed uses, having um, multimodal transportation. Um, so the public um, was invited to formulate some conceptual alternatives, and this was like quite fun. People were given like pieces of paper in where like red it means retail and light yellow it means like the single family homes and the orange are more of the multifamily homes and the dark green is like the um, more um, recreational areas are green but they are for active uh, use versus like conservation who would be like um, in the light uh, green and people were uh, in teams and that they were creating their ideal uh, land use um, plan so where things will be located and this is how this whole plan was envisioned it was more about what are the the land uses um, so the based on this um, mocks that people made there were several um, alternatives that were created so later the planners like looked at this and saw what were some of the patterns um, and they came up really with like three different themes although there was like seven different um, alternatives so um, in general one was like called extending neighborhoods because it was the alternative number one which had a lot of like single um, family homes in the um, co color like, like yellow um, it was like extending through the site, so it took uh, like a large percentage of the of the site. Um, and then the other two general um, alternatives were titled cluster villages and concentration and conservation. So in cluster villages, you have that um, the majority of the density were going to happen where the BART station uh, is located, um, and you will have a lot of the institutional uses there as well and then you have like these the smaller villages that are more like little nodes that were have inside of them um, also some multifamily um, some of them were just single family but the point being is that there will be like some other uses in these like um, little um, villages um, at various degrees, right? And then we have the conservation and concentration kinds of alternatives. And these ones were more mostly about um, put forward by environmentalists that wanted to see the majority of the space remain um, open with no development, uh, no trails for people to be in, but just like develop it as like a natural um, open space area and then concentrating the development, so adding more density surrounding the um, transit um, station. So then the planners took these um, principles that were created, um, like the green planning, transportation options, having community facilities, land stewardship and economics, and they like evaluated each um, plan according to how they did um, on these different values. So this was very done in a very simple manner, just like using color coding in where um, the green, it would be like the best um, on that particular value. And then you have like the yellow for um, saying that it was good, but um, or sort of moderate, right? And then you have like the orange and the red. So this m it was bad on that like um, regard. So the community could see, okay, so how is this alternative valuing or uh, matching up with the values that we already established? Um, and as you can see, many of these have like the pros and cons and there's gonna be like competing um, values and some people might be more interested in the conservation of the environment. Some other ones are going to be more interested in making the project um, economically feasible. And it's not that people don't value open space um, if they are uh, wanting to make the, the project economically feasible. 
or vice versa. This is what we discussed in previous chapters. So people could value both things, but they might value one of those more. So in this case, it will mean that if you want to um, make the space uh, more like open space, then um, again, the, the development it has to for allow for that. Um, so then there was like a workshop in where people were, um, because people actually like voted on these and people put forward which ones were their preferred alternatives. Um, so the one that was like the sprawling um, or standing, I should call it, not sprawling, uh, neighborhoods, that one was eliminated. And people like these two ideas as a whole, either concentration and conservation or the idea of like the cluster villages. So you merging those like three, um, three alternatives they created like a hybrid alternative based on the pe what people like the most of the um, cluster villages and also like going to the other one which is like concentration or conservation and they merged those three alternatives into one that people um, s s with the ideas that people seem to like the, the most. And then the same thing was done in where like they will be like evaluated according to um, some the previous goals and, and criteria. Um, at this point, you can also add new goals or not new criteria because you have more information about um, what people have have said. So you can really refine both. You can refine the values. You can refine the uh, land use plan um, as well. So by the end, the alternative that was selected is the cluster village concept. Um, so it didn't look like anything like the original ones because even after having those two alternatives in where you have the um, hybrid of the cluster villages and the hybrid of the concentration on conservation, uh, at the end we did a hybrid also of that. And this is like what consensus um, building is about. So it's like, n you know, at the end, no, I guess that nobody necessarily got what they wanted, but they got pieces here and pieces there and pieces there. And people at the end seem to be happy um, with the with the results. Um, and it achieved a lot of the goals of the project, which was like, um, as I spoke in the beginning, having transit-oriented development and accommodating for population growth. So at the end, there was like these villages that had like multifamily, mixed uses um, and the plan actually like incorporated more than initially was thought about active um, uses of like public lands so as you can see there's a lot of the dark green in this like final um, alternative and this means that this is space that the community can use for active uh, kinds of recreation um, and as you can see, there's a lot of like connectivity as well. So there's all these green belts going around the villages and also that connect to the, um, the main uh, TOD of the BART. Um, and these are spaces, these green belts are spaces where people could bike without having to interact um, much with cars and the same thing with like walking. So the, in my opinion, this ends up being like a very, very good plan. And the planners at the beginning didn't envision uh, such a good plan. So this is why you want um, public engagement. Um, and this, um, I will talk a little, little bit more about like all the types of engagements that, that happen in this project. But to go back to exhibit 3.1, um, you can see how all this was done in that particular project to develop a uh, problem statement um, criteria to identify the values um, uh, just that you have for that project, uh, formulate uh, conceptual alternatives, evaluate those conceptual alternatives, present a comparison of conceptual alternatives, um, select alternatives that should be considered in greater detail, refine the criteria to be used in evaluating um, the detailed alternatives and refine the reimagining alternatives and the el and evaluate the refined um, alternatives. So this project did um, precisely um, that. So for the naval, um, the Concord Naval Station, we have a process of community engagement 
um, that I'm like detailing here in very broad strokes. So we have like a kickoff theme introduction um, to the public, uh, open house in the community site, but also like in the Concord New Open Station where there were like a series of like field trips that the project, the, the public could go. And this was actually very exciting because a lot of people have not been inside of the Concord New Open Station as it was like um, really close to the public. Um, so it was like very exciting for a lot of people that were actually like ex-military that worked there um, a long time ago, 20 years ago, and then they settled um, in their community to go inside. Um, so this was very popular to do this like take take a bus and like see the Concorner Open Station. Um, so there were like several workshops defining the goals and the guiding principles. And this is done even before any land use um, alternatives were created at all. So you want to see what are the values first, right? And then you have like a, uh, this uh, workshop in where people like came and through like play, they actually created these like um, different alternatives, land uses. Um, then the, as I said, the uh, consultants in this case, they actually like, took that and they um, created these alternatives that le then later on people will evaluate. And there were like several workshops, you know, going back and forward. And at the end, there was a process of consensus building. Um, and at the end, the, was the decision makers adopted this plan and um, decision makers were like debriefed uh, constantly, um, at least once a month of like what was um, happening. So the takeaway from the Concorner Open Station is that staff planners give people also something to react. So you need to present something in order to give, um, to get good comments, right? Um, you cannot be there like saying, uh, oh, what we do with um, the Concorner Open Station. So you have to give people some framework um, and facilitate and manage the conversation. This is a very important element of public participation. Um, and this is something that it was done, so contacting the neighborhood leaders. Um, so I actually like, um, they, they hired me because a large percentage also of the, of the uh, community is um, Hispanic or Latino. And um, we, I actually was uh, in charge of like engaging all these like different um, groups um, like in the monument um, corridor which is the area that the Latinos were concentrated um, closer to actually um, where the BART um, is, is located and the and the transit because many of them had like jobs all over the um, Bay Area but um, there was like a lot of advising of the study like um, talking to them about what it was about the planning process it helped them to like actually um, put their reactions on, on paper and um, encourage them to like write letters so they will go then to the, uh, there was a, a special advisory um, committee on this and the corner of the, the Monument Corridor, many other organizations, Latin organizations will always like go there and uh, speak their mind. Um, the, uh, there was a lot of technical studies being done um, like uh, the environmental impact payment, um, uh, there was like a homeless plan, lots of plans that people were represented to the public and people needed to actually like respond um, to that in the formal uh, public hearings. Um, there was like press releases being prepared with the uh, general scope of the technical report. Um, and uh, of course like having like uh, email and web uh, website online submissions for comments postcards were sent to every single household about like how to get involved in the different events to complete surveys and so on um so if it's like a general plan like this that is so important again 25 percent of the land of the city so it's like huge um most cities will have like a very large um, and a robust public engagement um, process in order to for it um, to be uh, effective. 